So hey guys, what's up? Today we have again a very special person and this person is just from third year and he got a 268 on the USMLE step one and that's big because if you're in third year you have medical school to balance and you're studying at the same time plus you have not done a lot of clinical things that the step one requires but still this guy scored like a 268 and that's big. So by the way, uh, his name is Rishabh Delwadi and uh, this guy is from Jitmar and he's from third year so uh, say hi Rishabh. Hi everyone, this is Rishabh. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, where are you exactly from? Okay, so, well, I was born in the US, uh, didn't stay there for too long, pretty much lived my life in Bangalore. Alright. And, um, yeah, now in Pondicherry. <laughs> Having fun, alright. So, uh, let's start with, uh, you know, by the way, how much time did you take for the step one? Okay, so, um, I'd say I started in bits and pieces in June during my All fifth right. semester. Okay. Last year, uh, but then things didn't really go that well because um, I had missed a lot of my second year. Like I missed almost one and a half semesters, so I had to catch up on that. So um, I did bits and pieces, but proper dedicated was probably from January this year. Okay, from January this year. Like, in, so you started proper preparation from third year, and mm -hmm. you like in bits and pieces you started like in second year. All right. Uh, yeah. Like the, the thing. So what resources did you use by the way? Like proper resources for step one. So I started with um, Kaplan videos. All I right. used them for almost all the subjects except for Path and Micro. All right. Um, and then I used pretty much the standard resources, Katoma. I used Sketchy Micro, um, the First Aid book, Absolute Gold, um, the UL Question Bank, and the Amboss Bank, plus all okay. the practice tests as well. So all the practice tests, as in like how many NBMEs? I did. I did. Um, I think three plus. Five. I did eight NBMEs and two two UWSs. Two UWSs and any other extra resources other than this? Or no. No, pretty much. This was I used pretty much the standard resources. Nothing beyond. All right. And uh, so, like, when you started your prep, let's say you started in second year in bits and pieces. So, like, take us through that. Like, you know, from the start to the end. Like, till like the day of your USMLE. Like, how did it all like play out from the start? Okay. okay. So I started in around June. I got this sudden feeling that, okay, I want to do something useful, you know, I don't want to just continue with the way the, you know, the Indian education system isn't, you don't, it's not really practical enough, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I started then, I, there was actually this, in um, second year, thing, in second year, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's this thing called Becker, okay, um, so I just, I kind of started with that, that was the bits and pieces thing, I started, I was doing maybe around two to three hours a day, kind of mixing it with, I was playing cricket, I was playing basketball, we had college fests and everything. Um, and then, um, I know some stuff happened, I sprained my ankle, I was having a lot of problems with moving around and everything, so it came to a complete standstill after around two months. All right. And then um, I didn't really do anything until January, after our second year uh, mock exams and finals. Um, then in Jan, started dedicated mid-Jan, um, okay. I started with the videos, only the videos, which in hindsight was not that great. I would have Kaplan preferred videos. to do, yeah, I would have preferred to do something else side by side with the videos. Um, so I did the videos from Jan up till around April, nothing but the videos. That's a long time, by the way. It's for a long just... time. Agree. Yeah. And I did some um, questions with the Becker thing. I had uh, a UL subscription for six months, okay. Okay. and I had to start it because it was going to run out. So yeah. I started that in Feb. I did barely 20 questions a day. Okay. Um, I mean, again, like not really the best thing to do. Um, but I started. But even that. 20 questions a day takes time because when you're doing new world, you have to like kind of like go through everything, and you can't just miss anything because you were super. High. I didn't know. I didn't know how important it was at the time. All right. So I was so, just randomly doing 20 questions at a time. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I finished that and the videos, I just completely threw them away because I thought I'm probably not going to refer to them again. They seemed kind of, you know, not that important. Um, so after I, finishing it, like you never referred back to them, right? No, I did not. Not the videos. Okay. Um, so that's when I started reading my first aid book. Okay. Um, so it was then that I actually started to do the UL question bank proper on random one or okay. two blocks a day. So from okay. May onwards. Um, maybe like around 20 to 30, 20 pages reading a first state and then one or two blocks of UL. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so only after reading first state, like the UL percentage slowly, it started to rise. It was very average at the beginning. 
and okay. I slowly started to increase to you know my what the higher whatever level I reached later on. Um, and so by the way, did you do one pass of U World or two passes of I did one pass and then the incorrect only. All right. So only one pass and then incorrects only. That makes sense. Uh, the other thing here, like I would like to ask is, did you, by the way, refer to B and D or no? I did not because I didn't know about it. Okay. Uh, so like uh, BNB, by the way, is a great resource, guys. If you get the time, like it's super helpful in explaining first aid. If you're starting with it, like it's a very helpful resource. So try to refer to it if you can. Okay. Yeah. So agree because go. I, I, uh, read about it only later on and then I realized like oh crap I clearly missed out on something yeah uh, but because it was too late at the time it, it's very good for referring for state for the first time when you like are totally unaware of everything it, it helps you like adapt to first state very well I think mm -hmm. so yeah. uh yeah yeah so next what did you do like so did you by the way use sketchy or no I did I did use uh, sketchy micro so yeah so again sketchy micro and pathoma came a little later okay um so me, I did only that, like first aid and some U world, and okay. then after that, um, I learned about Pathoma and Sketchy Micro. So I started those immediately. It didn't take too long at all to finish. Um, they're pretty short. It didn't take okay. together. It didn't take more than a month, along with U world question bank. Okay. Um, yeah, I did only Micro. Uh, I was I was recommended to do Farm as well, but. Um, like we have a very interesting professor. You ask any Jitma right here. Uh, okay. He forces farm inside your head. So I thought that's something I didn't really need. Okay. Yeah. So um, that took another month. So I said we've come to July right now. Okay. Um, so this is when like I went full on into my question banks. Okay. So um, I did U World. I kept on doing U World uh, on average two blocks a day, and then I tried to read like you know do another pass of first aid slowly but um it didn't exactly happen all the time okay because of procrastination or some feeling of burnout which i guess is bound to happen right after a few months and um, plus it's coronavirus time so plus that you're stuck at home. You're stuck. exactly you're stuck at home always if you look to one side your sister or someone is there and then this <laughs> side another parent is there you have no privacy nothing yeah um, but it has it it had it classes as well okay um but so it was that full-on question banks um i was recommended to do to try anki i had never tried it till then um, yeah so did you try anki or no i tried it i absolutely hated it because uh like why like did it, did it take too much time or you were like um i don't think it took too much time because it's just pretty factual you know like yeah. you can chuck 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 you can go through each card but okay. Um, I just, I didn't feel it was high yield, you know, because after doing all those questions, you have an understanding of what is important and what is not. And it was very memorization based, which is something I felt wasn't needed that much. Okay. So, uh, like you tried it, you used the Zanki deck, is it? Or no? I've tried Zanki, I tried Anking, I tried something called Soze, I tried everything and liked nothing. And that's ex the exact same thing that happened. I tried Anki and the thing that happened with me was there were 30,000 cards. And I was like, okay, fine, like maybe we can have a look at these things. But 30,000 cards was a lot. So I kind of like replaced that with a question bank. And I think that was a better idea. Like instead of wasting time on Anki, do a question bank because that teaches you like, you know, how to apply your concepts in a better way. Exactly. Okay. So by the way, okay. So you did which question bank? Did you do USB RX or Amboss or? I did Amboss as a second. You did bank. Amboss. Okay, and how helpful was Amboss? So Amboss, what I could see, I felt the question pattern was pretty similar. It wasn't that different from UL, except maybe that it gives you less information in the question okay. as compared to UL. Um, but what was really cool was um, right at the end, um, I had around three weeks left and no questions left to do. And um, I there was an advisor from Amboss and he said, why don't you just try there are these bonus questions? Okay. I, which I had no idea about. And there are around a thousand bonus questions and that was absolute gold. What does, what, what does, like, I don't know about even the bonus, what's bonus questions? Because I haven't it's heard literally of these. Just like, if you scroll down on the options, the question options, okay. like you get an option called USMLE step one bonus question. Okay. So are they free or, or like, do you yeah, have they come with the subscription. Okay, they come with a subscription. Yeah. So there are bonus questions too. Okay. Nobody knows about them at all. So extra, these are extra questions, right? Like if, yeah, yeah. So yeah, even for step two CK, there are a few bonus questions. 
Uh, I think, yeah. Okay, then. So these were so amazing. The fact that it didn't, um, like, it wasn't. It didn't exactly mimic the question pattern, but um, the questions were just really challenging, and they were really, really long. Each question was like a full page long. Okay. So like learning how to manage time with that question helped a lot on uh, my test day. Okay. Because so, like I was able to finish blocks with revision very quickly. So okay. It, just, it gave me like some proper peace of mind during my break time and everything. That and like you would be able to manage time. Okay. So uh, okay and okay after this like what did you do? So in the last three weeks you did Amboss, is it? Okay, the bonus questions only. Or did you do the whole question map? I did the whole question map before that. So like I finished the UL bank by around July or August. Okay. And the next two three months was only Amboss and UL incorrect. Okay, and okay, so you gave your a test like on what date exactly in October? Um, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> it was whenever I sent you that text. It was then. Okay, at the exact date. Yeah, like one day okay. before. That. So it was some. Uh, okay. 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 Wait. So no, it was the end of October, basically October last so, week. So you gave it in October last week, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, so that makes sense. So like, by the way, did you revise post it in the end, or just, did you just did portion lines? Like, um, I'm I, I, I felt that it wasn't going to be that useful, but I knew that if I didn't do another pass, I would never forgive myself. Okay. So I just did a quick run through a first aid it in the last couple of weeks okay mm -hmm. and um, yeah like the last couple of days like I had a set of around maybe 30 to 35 pages that I felt I just need to you know go through one more time all the memorization based things you know that you can't really learn you just have to mark um, yeah. that's what I did that's how I used first aid at the end and what about two like two to three days before the exam like what did you do like then so two to three days um uh, I didn't do too many questions, but I just wanted to keep my mind in that zone. So even up till the last day before the test, I did just one block just to you know keep my head in the zone. Okay. And um, again, I just revised those 30 to 35 pages of first aid that I wanted to do again. That's it. All right, that makes sense. And uh, okay, so by the way, like let's talk about your uh, test. Uh, like uh, let's talk about uh, your NDMEs and your UW essays. Like all about like you know your uh, practice test and uh, okay so when did you start doing practice tests what practices did you start with and in the end what practices did you rate and like tell us about how your score progressed through the okay. practice test yeah so my first test was four months before test day okay i started with nbme 13 the old ones were available at the time okay um i scored a 248 on the uh, first and maybe that's NBME 13 yeah. yeah i was pretty happy with that because i was very far from my test day i was really happy with that as a matter of fact Okay. And then um, for the next two months, I just did one per month. I okay. did uh, 15 followed by 19. Okay. So my score progressed. To, it progressed from 248 to I think 257, and then it hit 263. Okay. So that was two months before test day. Okay. And then um, I started the newer NBMEs. So in okay. order, I just went 21, 22, 23. Um, okay. So all those I got exactly the same: 260, 260, 260 in each of those three. <laughs> That's okay. So you scored 260, 260, 260 and then? And then, oh sorry, no. In one of them, like number 21, I scored like a little low. I scored 250, low 250. Okay. So, so um, in one of them you scored? A, yeah. Okay. But yeah. the other ones, it was rather consistent. Like, consistent. You know, yeah. Yeah. So that's great because you at least have consistency because that kind of tells you, okay, I'm in a green zone, you know, like fine. Yeah. And okay. So after that, what practices did you do and how much did you score? So then I took the UWSA one. All right. Um, I scored a two seventy three. Okay. Right. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty over predicted, right? So I didn't read too much into it, but it was a good test to learn from. Okay. And how many days before the test day was this? Um, that was I'd say around uh, a month. I think five weeks, maybe approximately. Five weeks. Okay. Yeah. And then UWSA two. Yeah. No, I mean I didn't do UWSA two. Um, every week I did one test. One one test. So I did eighteen, where um, eighteen I scored a two seventy one I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I did uh, twenty followed by twenty four. Okay. Um, twenty was again like dot two sixty, and okay. then 
24, which was my last NBME approximately uh, one and a half weeks before test day, I scored 268, which was my final score. So that was the most predictive one. That was the most. The last NBME was most predictive. Okay. After that, I did uh, UWSA 2 with the free 120, like on the same day to make it an, uh, a seven block test. Okay. So I scored a 271 and then um, around 98% on the free 120. So, okay, so that's great. And like, I think that's what like, uh, people give, like everybody asks one thing is when should I give the USMLE? I think that's the good, uh, like the answer to that is very simple is when your test scores, like your practice test scores reflect what you really want. And then that's when you should give it, like it's pretty direct. And okay, so after this, let's uh, talk about like how the test is right now. Like, you know, how did you feel the test was? Like you gave it in late October. What, uh, like, what did you think about like, how, was it difficult, was it hard? Or uh, like, was it easy? And uh, the other thing is like, how, like what was the, what was it most similar to? You know, like which practice uh, tests? And uh, like, what do you think was very high yield for the test? Um, so it's a little hard to say. Uh, okay. Like whenever somebody asks you what was high yield, I'm sure even you, you can't really directly say what was high yield. Right? Like, but in, in a broad term, like what resource yeah. was like, you know, oh my God, this okay. is such a game changer. Um, see, like, out of everything, obviously, question banks are the most important because I can tell you 90% of my learning was just the question banks. Forget the videos, forget first aid, everything. In terms of the question pattern, I'd say um, it was probably like 60% of the questions were like you were. Okay. Another 20% of the questions were like an NBME, like very okay. direct, factual based. And okay. the rest were kind of like AMBOSS, a little more challenging. You know, you have to actually think deep um you know try to put pieces together and get the answer yeah okay so uh that makes sense and uh by the way how was your test day like what did you uh, like how did you feel like again like, uh you know how much time did you take per block because with me what happened was i literally took for one block i, I took about 40 to 45 minutes and in the like next 15 minutes was like i went through my mark questions and was like okay did i choose the correct answer like how was it with you like i at least had 10 minutes in every block to check like how it went yeah um it was, well, I mean, honestly, test day from the beginning till end, I felt amazing because I just felt deep inside, you know, like I've done as much as possible. Like whatever happens, I will like leave it up to God, right? I put in my effort. Now let whatever happen, happen. Okay. So um, what was good was my first block went like really quickly. I finished it with, um, with uh, like I went through every single question, not just the marked ones. Okay. Including that, I finished it in 48 minutes. So 12 minutes to review like your choices. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 12 minutes left and everything done, like block over. Okay. So then just knowing that 12 minutes was added to my break time made a massive, massive difference because I didn't have to rush anything from there onwards. Even if I felt like taking a few minutes extra break time in between blocks, it was no problem. So and was, was it the same with every block? Like you had time or no? Uh, no. Uh, lucky for me, it was, I mean, it started like that for, in my first block. And then from there onwards, I did finish with a few minutes to spare. Like with revision, I had around three to four minutes left. Okay. Um, except for a, one one of the blocks, I guess it went till the last second with revision of okay. every single question. So um, I didn't review just the mark. Um, and then the last block, I was kind of like super excited. Almost done. Nine same, months same here. Same here. I, I was, was like, I was over. So what you And like till then, each block I had maybe maybe seven or eight were marked per block. And just in that last block, 20 were marked. I'm like, okay. shoot, I don't want to mess up this last block. And then we, it got over, time got over, and like, no use thinking about it. So, okay. yeah. Aren't you the happiest like when it ends? Like you, you've given such oh. a long exam, eight hours, and you're like, oh my God, I just went through like a, a massive experience in my life. Exactly. Like eight hours is like a big time, you know, for just an exam. Exactly, I was so happy, just came out, my mom was, you know, waiting in the hotel in Bangalore. You know, Bangalore yeah. traffic, right? You have to go stay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I had to, even though I lived there, I had to stay in a hotel nearby because it was really far. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. So then, and went, enjoyed, ate as much as I could. Yeah. yeah. And, and okay. And yeah. what about like, uh, by the way, did you doubt yourself? Like when you when you finished with the test, like how did you feel? You felt good, or did you doubt yourself? You were like, oh god, I got this wrong. I got this wrong. Because we always have those a few questions are like shit. That's like I, I, I like I had a few questions where I was like shit I marked that wrong, definitely and like how was it with you? So um, like 
many people I spoke to before the test, they told me never ever Google your answers between blocks, ever. Yeah. And I could not stop myself. Each between each block, I opened my phone. Like, should I? Should I not? Okay, fine. And then I Google the answer. So <laughs> I knew exactly what mistakes I made in each block. Okay. Um. So yeah, but there were there were particular questions which um I don't think I'm at liberty to discuss because yeah um, sorry. yeah. So um. Anyway, there was especially this one particular question that was completely absurd, out of the blue, like absolutely no chance on any other day I would have got that right. And yeah. through by hook or crook with some random logic, I was able to get it right. And that was when I thought to myself, you know what, if I'm getting this right, today's my day. Like there's yeah. no use doubting myself. So um, I did not doubt myself from that moment onwards. Okay, so that's okay. how it went. All right. So by the way, okay. So we'll end with this section, and we'll talk about all the med school resources you use, like uh, from first year, and like uh, you started in second year. Like I, I get that. But what med school resources did you use in first year, and what was helpful? Because um, I, I get one thing is if you work hard in first and second year, it pays off for USMLE too. It pays off for a lot of exams because a lot of like if you have what I, what I feel is if you kind of memorize things forever, because that happens with me is I remember anatomy things from my first year, a lot of anatomy, and that helps massively with exams because then it's the same thing. You're just going through the same thing and it's easier, right? So like, how did you go through first year? Um, my first year, um, I think you know, right here in India, we usually have exam books and actual learning resources. Yeah. So I used Gray's Anatomy for students and um, okay. for, anatomy, right? for anatomy, Gray's and B.D. Chaudhary for um, exam exactly. standard. Um, yeah, and like I felt um, Gray's was pretty helpful for the anatomy part because um, most of the resources don't really cover anatomy that well for step one. Okay. Um, so they just in terms of visualization and everything because you don't really have to know in depth anatomy, right? Like uh-huh. exactly this is here, this is no like. Just you have to have an idea for step one. It doesn't have to be yeah. pinpoint. Exactly. So in that way, Gray's was pretty good. Um, and then physiology, we used our professor's book, G.K. Pal. Okay. Like we had to use, uh, but Guyton was pretty good, honestly, uh, compared yeah. to this. So, so did you, did you do all of Guyton or no? No, I did. It's like it's hard to do all of Guyton. I did bits and pieces, like the, especially the ECG part and the. Um, you know, like the muscle contraction part, like very specific, very important things that, you know, it's kind of must know. Okay. And uh, biochemistry? Biochemistry, we use this book called Vasudevan. All right. Um, only that, honestly, like for the, in terms of step one, not useful at all. Um, yeah. Like it's solely based on step one resources that, you know, I learned biochem. Okay. So uh, by the way, like if somebody has to use like other resources, let's say now, because people, like a lot of people ask, like for Indian students, uh, like everybody's like marrow prep ladder. Do you think like if you use marrow in first year, it would help with USMLE and itself? Because I think like when you like when you uh, when a teacher takes you through the whole thing, that gives you a massive advantage. Like that's my view because then like they know everything and they kind of like really make it easy for you like going through books and all. Like that's help. I didn't use marrow because at my time like there was no marrow. But what what's your view on that? Like if you start like first year with marrow, you mean like that from a USMLE point of view? Yeah, from a USMLE point of view. Um, I too did not use Marrow, but a lot of my friends did. Okay. Um, like Marrow gives you, I feel it just gives you an overload of information. Okay. Right. Uh, it gives you a lot of stuff that won't help you as a doctor, won't help you for step one. You have to know how to pick and choose what you want to remember. Okay. That's the thing. I mean, yes, like considering you can go at your own pace with Marrow compared to you know your class lectures or something. In all that, it is great, and my friends. Definitely recommend it. Some of them. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend it to someone who's preparing dedicatedly for step one. Okay. So uh, you wouldn't recommend it to someone who's preparing dedicated because everybody's like, okay, but if instead of BNB or these resources, I use Marrow. Like, yeah. what? Okay. Yeah. So I like the just same questions. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's one thing. And the second thing is, okay, so how was second year? Like, how did you prepare in second year for like different? Okay. So second year, uh, I mean, like. I was I wasn't in college for six months at the beginning. Okay. Completely. So uh, like I had to start from scratch from the middle of fourth semester. Okay. Um. So I used um for pathology standard Robin's book. Oh uh, yeah. Um, like it was I mean, it's really good to read. Um. I would say it did help. Like whatever important points once you keep reading through you'll understand what is important. You know like 
the pathogenesis and the presenting features are important and then all that uses genetic parts and stuff is is like useless, useless yeah exactly so it did help for step one because i already had a good idea of pathology even before like for example starting pathoma or something um so that helped a lot I you know the weird lot. thing with these books is like they never compare things like i like robins i have read robins too but like uh, so let's say you do us mini rx right the good thing about that question that i did was there is a table in which they differentiate necrosis versus apoptosis and they like in necrosis the cell like becomes bigger apoptosis the cell becomes smaller right mm. the thing with like these books is like i i don't understand why don't they do it like it, it would be so good if you can like just give us a table in which you can explain okay so why is necrosis different than apoptosis right there's inflammation necrosis apoptosis no uh, like i did not know these things until i did like good question back and i was like shit like why has nobody ever taught this to me so that's one thing i i think is lacking right now is uh, we need a few good resources that show you like okay it like in so, for in such cases it's completely up to the student to use his or her mind and try to put things together and understand things like nobody gives it to you like just nobody like nobody give it to you <laughs> i think that's a good thing with your assembly rx cuz i uh, had four state they, they just give it to you cuz they they'll write up the whole thing compare everything and that's great mm-hmm. okay and uh, okay so you used uh, robins and nothing else nothing else okay uh, what about other things pharma um pharmacology um i used at the beginning completely i used cadsum okay and then later on exam time came i started using kd tripathi kd tripathi all right and what what about micro micro again we have a professor here dr akub shastri so we uh, used so his book that's a big book that uh, everybody saw on that yeah i it actually i find it a really good book it, it can work for us only it can even work for the indian pg entrance it's just that in the classes they don't concentrate on any of the important stuff like all they care about are the pages and pages of lab diagnosis and they don't give a crap about the actual presenting features and you know stuff uh-huh. like that which is actually important like how will you diagnose without even having an idea of what the organism will be yeah that's important like i think that's what like in, in india microbiology doesn't teach you is <laughs> that thing all they care yeah. about is how does it look how does it like you know in the microscope how does it look exactly. what kind of See, they don't like teach you what's actually like like you know what happens with this organism what features will you see that us only focuses a lot on okay yep. uh, that that makes sense okay so uh, uh, like in the end like let's just like discuss about like uh, what would your advice be to somebody who's starting us only like prep and like in in first or second year because that's a very everybody's like okay i'm starting in first year second year how do they start and like what would your advice be so um what i told my juniors as well is um like at the beginning it might be a little difficult but later on like towards the end of first year beginning of second year is just about starting to think more like a doctor and not a student more right? like a doctor student, yes yeah so it's like whenever you read through the books like okay yes like even anatomy basic anatomy you can memorize a lot of things like this is here 3 cm this side you'll get this and then this and this you can memorize all that but you know think like a doctor when you are you know actually going in and cutting open someone um you know what just think in your mind what you are going to see first what you have to do like cut here or go there what you'll have to push this side it's about thinking even when it comes to pathology pharmacology um it's about putting all the subjects together because when you're practicing it's all together right it's not like you know one person will diagnose and then you go to the next door person pharmacologist will treat it's not like that so um, it's all about integration i think that's a big for usmle is integrating multiple subjects because that's how they ask questions like if you think about it like they'll ask you not about like okay let's like a, there's a drug called fidoxamycin and the way it works is it's a rna polymerase inhibitor they would not tell you like okay in a question how does fidoxamycin work that's a neat question in usmle they they would ask you is okay so there's a person who has a uh, clostridium difficile like they won't tell you the clostridium they won't even they, tell you that yeah they, they'll just give you a presentation of it and then you will be expecting okay like everybody thinks banco like banco is the answer but you wouldn't see banco in the question and you you will be like it, it's like it decreases rna like you know decreases the production of rna because that's how rna polymerase uh, works yeah that's how it works so you wouldn't even see rna polymerase inhibitor so like those, those are the kind of questions they ask like multiple integrations because here they are integrating with uh, let's say medicine because medicine uh, is all about presentation of things and then they are integrating with pharma how does like fidoxamycin work and with biochem because rna polymerase like so three subjects integrated into one so that's how us only works and what else like what else would be there another thing i would really tell someone to do is um from second year onwards we have uh, clinics right 
Yeah. Um. So like, like you can honestly just screw the lectures. It will won't help at all. But like, all right. really, really go and attend. You don't really have to um wait for the consultant or someone to come and teach you. Like, uh-huh. if you actually go, just talk to a patient. Um. Just you know, try to examine the patient and then read the chart. Like you can learn so much, and that honestly helped me a lot for step one because. They like in one and a half years, I've seen so many cases because you know here the the sheer number of cases. Um, any any disease you want, you can pick it up. Like the rarest okay. of rare diseases. Um, so that's something that students should do. Like, don't go to clinics for attendance because that happens a lot of the time. And like, wouldn't you agree that in clinics, like uh, like you can read good books. So like there are books like uh, for clinics too. Uh, I don't know like if you use those. Like what books did I use? Like I used a lot like of books. Macleod, Hutchinson. Exactly. Like but there are other ones. Like what do you call that? Like there's a book called Kundu. I don't know. Like I even like those because they're good review books for clinics. And like I, I did a lot of clinical books just like uh, because like even for like surgery, I did a lot of clinical books because I wanted to learn okay what like like indirect versus direct hernia. You know how do you differentiate? How do you what test like yeah. do what? And I think that's so helpful for your assembly because it's like more clinical than people would think. Like it, it's very based on fourth year too. Like it has medicine, surgery, a bit of those, like a lot of those things, a lot of medicine actually. And like doing those uh, like clinical things like helps you massively because then you're like, okay, I know, okay, how to differentiate these things. I know like you know what how the progression of a disease is, like a, a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, so that's it. And by the way, like one more thing. This is the uh, last thing. Is uh, like so like a lot of questions you don't know the answer to. Like you know like if, if you are going through USMLE, you never know the answer to everything. Like how how do you do that? Like how do you solve a question when you don't know the answer? Like because uh, that's what I think differentiates people who score very high. Like I really feel so because I had that ability too. Because when I used to go through your world, I used to solve questions that I didn't know the answer to based on clues in the question. So they will give you okay this is normal. Physical examination is normal. That says a lot of things. Meaning you know when they did like a pulmonary examination that was probably normal. Okay. So how do you do that? Um. Yes. Uh. Picking up clues is important. Um, okay. But. It's. I think a lot depends on you know like you shouldn't get bogged down when you see such a question. Like uh-huh. you need to have a lot of self belief. Like I you know like if I am not able to answer this, that means okay a lot of people too aren't able to answer this. Um. So like you know like I have faith in myself that I can find the answer even though I have absolutely no clue right now. Just uh-huh. giving it that few extra seconds or looking at it from a different angle. Um. Yeah, because usually even such questions you can still rule out two to three options. Yeah, so, you can like at, at least increase your chances of getting it right. Because like if you have like have like five five options and you're confused, you're like uh like you know you have like a how much like twenty percent chance of getting it right. And if you can take out let's say two three options, that increases your chance of getting it right. Even if you don't know it, at least you you have a better chance of getting it right. right? Exactly. So so, uh, so that's yeah. super important. Yeah. And by the way, how many questions in the U- in USMLE you didn't know the answer to? Like there there must be questions. Like how many questions were there? Um, which I had absolutely no clue. Not absolutely. Like you were not sure about. Like was a few questions you were like absolutely okay. This is the answer. A few yeah, questions you have to rule out. Mm, rule out. Definitely quite a few questions that I had that I doubted myself. Yeah. Um, but like after doing all those practice tests and stuff, um, like. There were so many questions where I would just kick myself, you know. I would put an option and then overthink and then change. Yeah. So for this one test, I just promised myself I would not overthink. Whatever my first choice would be, I would just go with it, even if I felt like changing it later, because I knew more often than not that would be the right answer. Um, but um, there were quite a few. I can't put a number on it, like a lot. But absolutely no clue. I counted around five or six. Absolutely, genuinely no, no idea. But you know, I was somehow able to put things together, and I think uh, use I some think kind of logic to solve it. Random I think logic. That's very important. Is you shouldn't give up. Like I, that's what happens is a lot of people give up when they see a question like shit. I have never seen this. Like I don't know how to answer this. Okay. But like the thing is, you shouldn't worry because a lot of people also can't do it. <laughs> and uh, like uh, they don't. Sorry, a lot of people also don't know the answer. And it's all about like there there must be a clue in the question that helps you answer it. Because that's how it works. Every question is solvable, and they will give you clues to solve it. And you just need to take that chance, right? Exactly. So uh, okay, so we are done with that. So uh, by the way, we have, uh, thank you guys for attending and have fun. And by the way, all the best for your assembly step one. So okay. So guys, if you like this video and you would like to watch more videos. about usmle and medical school a subscribe to this channel would be amazing and a like would be amazing thank you